All right. This is intro to the strat. To me, the best way to be able to read candlesticks. This will help you and it will go a long way. This is part one. I will have a part two. I don't know if there will be a part three, but this is a part. This will be part one. All right. So next disclaimer, read the disclaimer. All right. So what is the strat? The strat is a simple way of trading and it gives you entries and targets when used correctly. It is trading price action and it requires patience and discipline with type stop losses. You trade using the three universal truths, which are time frame continuity, actionable signals, and broad information. The strat is based on trading what you see and relying on quantifiable data. The strat also helps take the guesswork out of your trading. So candlestick refresher, just in case people are watching this and they don't know too much about candlesticks. What is a candle pattern? It is a method of reading price charts. OHLC means open, high, low, close, or basically closing prices for any time frame. A shadow or wick shows the low or high price. If there is a long upper shadow wick, that means buyers took the price up, but sellers pushed the price down, which also signifies resistance. If there is a long lower shadow slash wick, that means sellers push the price down, but buyers push the price back up. All right. So as you can see by looking at this, Here's your candle anatomy. All right. Right here, you can see this is the high of the candle. And right here is the low. So on that OHLC, this is the H. This is the L. Here's your open right here. All right. And then your close. So OHLC. All right. That's a bullish candle. How you know your bullish candles from your bearish candles is for a bullish candle, the close is higher than the open. And on a bearish candle, the close is lower than open all right so bullish close higher than open bears close lower than open all right also just the mindset of if you know where the open is and you know where the close is you know think about it like this if you're selling something right if the price of your product is going up that's that's very good right so you know bullish if the price uh of your goods that you were selling is on today lower than it was yesterday that's not good nobody wants to sell their stuff in it and it get cheaper all right so and then right here not really going to go over this but you can see basically a really bullish candle on uh, a really strong candle is when it doesn't have any wick all right that's the main thing i want you to take from here as well as the indecision candle right here which is like your doji all right most of the time, you're going to see candlesticks more like this. All right. But a lot of times when it comes to, you know, staying in your trades, seeing candles like this close like this or this, that's like a no brainer. All right. But the strat combos and where you can find these at Sarah Strat Sniper on Twitter. I'm pretty sure she has this in her pen tweets. As you can see right here, Sarah Strat Sniper. That's what you will find her on Twitter. These are the strat combos. It will make more sense as we go further, but I just wanted you to be able to see the combo sheet and know where to get it from. All right. So 212, 312, 22 reversal, 322 reversals, a rev strat, which is just a three, a PMG or a pivot machine gun, a 122 rev. These are the ones that you want to familiarize, familiarize yourself with. But most beginners start off with usually using like the 212 and the 312s as your you will find out your ones are your actionable signals. All right. But a scenario one inside candle, this candle right here, it doesn't break the high. All right. Remember from seeing the sheet, the high or the low of the pre uh, previous candlestick. All right. We're always basing the candle that we're looking on based off what it did in relationship to the prior candle. All right. So a one candle is basically a consolidation. It's the equally uh, equilibrium between buyers and sellers it didn't make a higher high or a lower low it basically just stayed inside of the previous candle price didn't really go anywhere all right a scenario two or in this case a two down 
you know, because with two, some people just say two, some people say two up or two down or T two D or two, uh, two U a two down. We break the low. All right. We broke the low right here. You can see the green line. We broke the low of the previous candle. So this candle right here is a two down because it broke the low of this candle right here, which is the previous candle. All right. One of the things that you want to remember whenever it comes to candlesticks in these scenarios is you want to wrap your mind around being in force and not being in force. So for instance, this candle right here, this two down that we're looking at, it is not in force because it didn't stay below the previous candles low. All right. This is something I just want to touch on right now, but I would touch on more in uh, part two, but it's not in force. All right. Being that it's not in force means that it's not still below the previous candles low. So like, for instance, if you were in a trade, let's say you got in at the break of it and now it's not in force anymore. You can basically look to get out that trade. The trade is good as long as the tr as long as it's still below its trigger in the case of puts or still above its trigger or below its trigger if you're shorting above the trigger if you're longing. All right. But being in force means staying below the previous candles low or if it's a two up staying above the previous candles high. All right. Not in force is if it did break the previous candles low. Now it retraced back above it or not retraced, but went back above it. All right. So just something I want to mention here. That's a little bit advanced, but I wanted to go ahead and mention now. So you can start thinking about that more whenever you uh, start looking at your charts. So next, a two. Uh, this is a two up right here. It breaks the high of the previous candles. You can see right here, as far as going off the previous one, this one is in force. All right. And it closed in force. It stayed above the previous candles high. But a two up basically breaks upwards. All right. So two up is the direction it broke in. So it broke the high of a previous candle. So two down breaks the low of the previous candle. Two up breaks the high of the previous candle. So, you know, think up high. So two up, break high, down low. Um, breaks low all right so two down down low breaks the low all right so it's all about the direction price breaks in now a scenario three is the opposite of one so you can look at it as, at an inside candle as like your introvert it likes to stay inside things of that nature your three is very outgoing right that's why it's also you know you can you'll hear some people call it a three you'll hear some people say outside so they'll let's say this is a three on a daily chart. They'll say it went outside day or if it's a three on the hour, they'll say it went outside hour. But your threes are like your extroverts. All right. Outgoing. So what it does is it starts as a two in one direction, fails and takes out the other side. All right. So that's why being in force and not being in force matters, because if it breaks and goes two up first. And then it starts filling, it comes back below that price. It's not in force anymore. And then if it retraces like 50% of the previous candle, that's a good way of it going outside. All right. And basically going three. So your three is the opposite of your one. Your one is your inside candle. That's your consolidation. Your three is your outside candle. It also is a broadening formation on a lower time frame. And we'll get into broadening formation later. So time frame continuity. Time frame continuity in simplistic terms. It is when, and it's a few different continuities, but the ones that most people look like, it's when the month, week, day, one hour have a green candle. All right. The, so the week to the hour all have green candles. I mean, the month to the hour all have green candles. This means the stock is bullish on those four time frames, giving it full time frame continuity. So a lot of times, if you're a long term investor, you will look for continuity and it's always four time frames. All right. You will look for continuity on the yearly, the quarterly, the monthly, the weekly. All right. When you're swing trading, most people use the month, week, day and one hour for their continuity. And for day trading, most people use your daily four hour, one hour, 15 minute. All right. These are the time frames most people uh, focus on 
I use these, but I also use multiple time frames. Using TradingView, that's what I like to chart on. I use the yearly, the six month, the quarterly, the monthly, the two week, the week, and just to find you know different actionable signals. But as far as time frame continuity, I like to see what the year quarter all the way down to the they are looking at looking like just because if the year and quarter is green, let's say at the current moment, the month is red, but the week and day are reversing and we potentially could break back above the monthly open. All right. Uh, because the monthly is the one that's red, then we can have time frame continuity from the year all the way down to the day, which is very powerful because it lets you know who's in control. And that's what time frame continuity lets you know who's in control. Are the bulls in control? Or are the bears in control? And if it's something where you can't tell who's in control, that means that's something that you wouldn't want to touch. All right. So going back to basic candle anatomy, as far as knowing time frame continuity, it's based off the open. You know, if price is above the open, it's bullish. The candle is going to be green. If price is below the open, the candle is going to be red. All right. So as far as understanding time frame continuity, you can simply just start by marking your opens. All right. And you'll see how price reacts to those different opens. Just a little pro tip right there. So next, understand time frame flow, which is the most important thing I think people need to understand. Because people treat time frames like they're different entities. All right. So many traders make time frames more complex than it is. They tend to focus solely on one time frame by trading, whether it's day trading or swing trading, right? Time frames are different ways of looking at the information. A day chart has a new candle every day. A new, a one hour chart has a new candle every hour. So it's telling you how much data is stored in that time frame, like basically stored in that candle. If we're on a one hour time frame, each candle is one hour's worth of data. So if you think about the math or whatnot, you can think about it like this. It takes five three minute candles to make one 15 minute candle, right? It takes four 15 minute candles to make one hour candle. And it takes two 30 minute candles to make an hour candle. All right. Time frames flow together. If we keep getting two up, two up, two up, two up, two up on the three minute, that's going to affect your 15 minute. That's going to affect your hour. That's going to affect your day, things of that nature. But still, obviously, we want to focus from a top down approach. We want to see what is the month, the week, the day doing. And then from there, figure out how we would want to trade based off of that higher time frame premise and making sure those lower time frames is aligning with those higher time frames. But sometimes we can see the entries on the lower time frame first before it the the let's say like the 15 minute is bearish, but the hour and the four hour in the day are green, right? They're they're bullish, right? You keep seeing it push up on a three minute, eventually that's gonna push the 15 minute up, right? And that's gonna go back green. And you get that reversal back to the upside. So understanding how these time frames flow into each other can help you see. A reversal on a lower time frame that might lead to a higher time frame reversal and gets you a little bit of an earlier entry, right? Uh, especially if you're doing it the right way, focusing on time frame continuity, focusing on broad information, which is going to be next. All right. So I just want to implant that into your mind to think about that as you start to, you know, look through charts after this. So right here, time frame continuity comparison. This is like the thinkorswim. If you use thinkorswim, what it'll look like. So right here, you see. The year, quarter, month, week is all green, but the day four hours 60. So in this situation, you will wait for a reversal back to back into continuity where your 64 hour and daily can be taken green to be in a alignment with the week, month, quarter, year. Maybe it doesn't happen that day. Maybe it's the next day and you see a daily uh, reversal that leads to the day going green. Right. And now your day four hours 60 is green along with your week, month, quarter, year. Whereas like QQQ, you can see right here, full time frame continuity to the downside. It doesn't show the year on here, but the year was red, all right? These are the trades where if the 30 and 60 went green, you wait for that reversal to, they all go back to a reversal in the 60 is gonna end up leading with the 30, 15, all that going red. That's gonna be like when you get a new hour candle. A lot of times when you get a new hour candle, you're getting a new 30 minute and 15 at the same time. So things of that nature. So again, understanding how time frames flow, understanding when you get a new candle, that's going to help you with time frame continuity. Because just because today is that day is red doesn't mean the next day is going to be red. All right.
So actionable signals. Inside bars are actionable signals because that is a consolidation. This signal is a bearish pattern with little to no body followed by a downtrend in price action as far as this. This is what we would call a Momo shooter. All right, a Momo shooter happens in the trend. All right, so what happen is we'll have a nice strong push down. All right, a nice strong bearish candle. And then a lot of times what happens here, there's some profit taking, some, you know, some covering positions because, you know, the shorts are eaten. All right, and then immediately on that next candle, we end up going 212 because it's a two down and this is a two down. We end up going 212 continuation. Your Momo shooters are a lot of times where people get shaken out on and a Momo shooter, and I'm gonna show you a Momo hammer. It's a lot of times what we would call a TTO or triangle day out, which just means it is a corrective activity, it's a pullback. Price doesn't go straight up and it doesn't go straight down. There will be pullbacks along the way. And looking at multiple time frames and seeing like, oh, the five minute look like it's pushing up. But if you look on the 15, it's just the inside candle like it is right here. It's like, OK, I don't get scared and get out my position because I know that time frame continuity to the downside. I know that I got in around the top of the broad information. Now, this inside candle, I just wait till it closes, see what happens on that next candle. And then if you would have been able to sit through this and saw it you know, end up dropping down because obviously at some point it was all the way up here when you're watching it. That's why you can't panic. You got to let the candle play out, let it close. You'll see, boom, close like this. All right, 212 continuation could be a potential ad below this position. But this is your Momo shooter. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Um, Again, it might not make sense now, but as you learn and you rewatch this video, because you're probably going to have to watch this a couple of times, it will make so much more sense but this is a momo shooter it's an inside candle again it happens in the trend sometimes momo shooters aren't uh inside candles sometimes they're two down but basically the momo shooter i mean yeah the momo shooter forms around the close so the the open and the close is going to be like right around the close of the previous candle so for instance let me show y'all this if i annotate it essentially let's say i drew it right here and this is go two down. So let's say it went two down. Essentially, let's say it opens here. The body went two down, right? But there's a wick right there. All right. And let's say this is red. So basically, it's still closed here. So open here and closed here. It pushed up, but it closed red, right? That's a Momo shooter. All right. Price pushing up just meant that there was some profit taken, some covering, things of that nature just for it to get shoved back down on the um, next candle. Those are very good at helping you understand that we're continuing that direction. There was, that's a continuation pattern. All right. This right here is a Momo hammer. The opposite, you can see it forms right around the close. All right. Basically just opposite of the, the uh, Momo shooter. This indicates a price trend continuation. It signifies that there could have been some profit taking. All right. So again, looks like it's reversing. They take profits, push it back up on the next candle. It goes 212 uh, continuation. Sorry, but that's your Momo hammer. Your hammer right here, a bullish actionable signal showing that price is positioned for a potential uh, trend reversal. I like these off the bottom of a broad information. So I like these after we basically like run liquidity uh, and basically take out a low. And then we start coming back into that range because... A broad information with when it comes to a broad information price likes to take out one side and go take out the other i'll be able to show you an example because that is coming up um but i like hammers off of broad informations all right but that's what your hammer will look like if you're using trading view there are certain scripts that will highlight hammers for you all right just so you know if you're like oh i'm not good at identifying hammers or shooting shooters which some people call shooting stars there are scripts for that in trading view. All right. And then a shooter it's opposite of a hammer, a bearish candlestick with a long upper shadow, little or no uh, lower shadow and a small real body is the opposite of a hammer like these at the top of the broad informations. All right. So that's what your shooter is. This line right here signifies where your entry would be. So if I was trying to take this, this is your textbook 2-2 reversal. The entry is below here. For me, I probably put my stop up here. All right, especially if it just created the top of the broad information, 
I put my, my stop at the top of this or just slightly above the broad information. So broad information. Broad information is how price discovery works. Price aggregates because we know that there must be a buyer for every seller. Somebody, If somebody says there's more buyers than sellers, that is false. Uh, the market is auction based. There must be a buyer for every seller. All right. The difference is if they're hitting the bid or are they taking the at, the offer slash ad. So, for instance, if buyers, it's a, and it's basically about who's aggressive. So, if price is going up, that means buyers are more aggressive, right? So, how you know if buyers are aggressive is they're constantly hitting the ask. They're trying to get in the trade immediately. The quickest way to get into the trade is the market order that's basically hitting the ask. All right. If uh, shorts or bears are aggressive, they're basically hitting the bid. They're trying to short the trade. They're trying to push it down immediately. They're going to keep hitting the bid, 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 bid. All right. Which is basically a market order. A limit order for buyers is if they bid, right? That's a that's not an aggressive buyer. That's a limit. That's a passive buyer. All right. When you do a limit order, that's passive. All right. When you market order, that's aggressive. All right. So it's about which side is more aggressive. All right. Are bulls aggressive or are bears aggressive? Are bulls hitting the ass or are sellers hitting the um, bid? And then most trading is done by computer slash algos. So how do you find broad information? Scenario threes are broad information on a lower time frame, as well as a compound three, which is basically a two up and then a two down, which takes out um, the high a range and then the two down takes out the low of the range, right? Um, so basically to show you an example of that, is it's probably going to be ugly. I suck at drawing, but let's say you have a candle right here. All right. And then the next candle goes two up. Boom. Right. And then you have the next candle after that come down and go two down. And it takes out the low of this candle right here. These two candles right here together are a compound three of this candle. Because remember, three, it takes out the high and low of the previous candle. So basically, this candle right here takes out the high, and this candle right here takes out the low, which gives you, if you put those two candlesticks together, a compound three. All right. Like they fuse together, kind of like Dragon Ball Z. If you ever watch that, you know about Gotenks. All right. So, how do you draw broad information? You draw broad information by drawing back from a high to a previous lower high, and from a low back to a previous higher low. All right. And I do already have a broad information video on the channel, broad information part one and two. You can go check that out. But basically, let's say right here and then back here, you have that lower high. Right. I would take my drawing tool and I will click on this high first and then draw back to this one. And then if it was a low right here and then let's say a little higher low right here, I'm going to draw from this one first back to that one. All right. A lot of times you're drawing either from a three back to a two. Or you're drawing from a two back to a three, all right, or a two back to a two. Those are what you're drawing off of. You don't draw broad information off of ones, all right. So, right here is a perfect example, all right. I drew from this candle back to this candle, all right, and then I drew from this candle back to that candle, all right. Why this candle? Uh, if you watch the liquidity plus broad information, this right here is a swing low. All right. A swing low. If you look at it, this candle's low is lower than this candle right here and this candle right there. So this one and this one, that's what we're lower than. All right. So to draw it out, here's your low. Here's a higher low and another higher low on each side. Right. So you're looking at three candles. It basically creates that candle that sticks out like a sore thumb. Or if your middle finger is longer than your ring finger and point finger, that's what you you basically would have. All right. So this creates your swing low. A lot of times that's where liquidity is at. That's a lot of times where you would be drawing your broad information. You see how this basically I drew from this swing low back to this swing low. And then this three is just slightly a swing high. So I basically drew from this swing high back to this swing high. All right. Not the green candle, but the blue candle. All right. So just to draw what a swing high looks like, we have the candle right here, higher high, lower high. All right. 
So your swing highs, you would label that basically as your second candle. Here's your first. Here's your third. All right. Your second candle's high. It's going to be higher than your first candle and your third candle. All right. That's why a lot. Of, that's why we're basically drawn off of threes or drawn off twos. If you think about that, what I just showed you, if, if it's a two down, a lot of times, if you're drawn off the right one, a lot of times it's a swing low. You're drawn from one swing low back to another swing low. You're drawn from one swing high back to another swing high. That's your liquidity. That's price running stops that were below here. And then stop price running stops above here. All right. That's basically what's going on. So reversals, how to play reversals. The best way to play the strat when you're first starting, uh, when you first start using it is by playing re reversals back into time frame continuity, reversals off the bottom of bottom or top of broad information. All right. So right here, this is kind of like blurry. I want to say, I don't know if you can see it as good as I can see it. But as you can see right here, price, all right, this is a reversal back into time frame continuity. You see this green candle right here, all right, is a bullish candle on the daily chart. At this point, the month, week were red, all right, as well as the year and the quarter. The day was green, just like I talked about before. The day was green, but on the next day, we gap down right here, all right, so your hour goes uh, red and the four hours also red. It's just whenever I took the picture, it was green um, because of another trading day. But the four hours red, we're basically taking that reversal back into time frame continuity. So you could have either got in when it got down or just waited for confirmation, waited for it to break below the day, got you a contract that's like two weeks out, and then played that reversal down. All right. And your target would have been down here. OK, which is the bottom of broad information. And as you can see, we end up going three on the monthly time frame right here. That's why this candle is blue, because it's, it's I have it to where the outside candles form blue. Right. And so that's a broad information on a lower time frame. So once we started to reverse and we're targeting here, we end up going outside month. Right. And so now we have our broad information top and our broad information bottom but we might continue to expand downwards because what happens when it comes to broad information is price is going to expand in the direction of time frame continuity. So what that looks like is if we're bullish, we're going to respect broad information bottoms, which means we can basically kind of like find support there. And we're going to blow through broad information tops because we're price is going to continue to push up. Whereas if we're bearish, we're going to, respect broad information tops and blow through broad information bottoms price is going to expand downwards right so we're going to blow through bottoms just because price um because um bears are in control and they want price to go lower so we're going to contend to break through bottoms of broad informations all right and that's how it works the broad information works so whenever you're taking a let's say you're waiting for a reversal back into time frame continuity and Basically, time frame continuity for the most part is green, except for on a couple of time frames. If you can find where broad information will be created on that time frame, right, where it's red, get in off around the, where we take out like a liquidity low. If you can get in there and take a 2 2 reversal off that creation of that bottom of the broad information, when you approach that top that we put in, we should blow through that. Hopefully, that is clicking you might have to listen to me say it a couple of times but when it comes to broad information because some people are like why is it breaking above the broad information or why is it breaking below understand that based off the time frame continuity we will either blow through it if it's the top or reverse off of it it's the bottom if we're bullish so if we're, we're bullish we'll reverse off bottoms blow through tops if we're bearish all right we will reverse off of tops blow through bottoms and not and sometimes we'll push through certain tops before we reverse back to the downside that's why you have to make sure that you're lining your reverses up on multiple time frames so when you're viewing your charts you will be viewing it like this side by side by side all right you're not going to have just one time frame up all right you will be looking at the time frame and this is what's going to help you understand time frame flow having up those four charts at one time all right
So review, this was a simple breakdown of the strat trading strategy. I have more videos coming. There are plenty of resources about it on YouTube. Benzinga did an interview with different stratters. The creator of the uh the creator of the strat is Rob Smith. His Twitter handle is Robin the Black. His YouTube channel is Smith in the Black. Tell him I sent you. All right. Another strategy to follow on Instagram is FICO.Jordan. I believe he has a YouTube called FICO Jordan. So FICO as in FICO score, F-I-C-O Jordan. All right. Um, that's a homie. He, he's the one who introduced me to the strat back in 2020. But this is essentially the strat system. All right. Make sure you get this print off right here from Sarah. Sarah's YouTube. I mean, Sarah's, uh, she, Sarah Strat Sniper also has a YouTube channel, but make sure you get it off her Twitter. All right. So that way you can print this off, not print it off, but you can download it and have it on your computer. Or if you want to print it off, you can print it off. All right. So just to go back over this, just so you can see this real quick. What I mean is you, whenever you have your broad information is created. So now you can see how it works. Let's say right here. This is a broad information bottom time frame continuities to the upside. Then you would be okay with taking this 2 2 reversal back up. All right. Towards whatever top of the broad information we're going towards. If we are, again, full time frame continuity to the upside, we should end up breaking through that. All right. Just like right here. All right. Let's say we're bearish time frame continuities to the downside, but except for on the day. So, like that Facebook example I gave, uh, we're basically meta, right? You take the 2-2 reversal off the top of that broad information, looking to go to the bottom of that broad information. All right. But this technically is your first target. All right. The candle before the two up. But long story short, obviously, these aren't going to be the only two candles you see on the chart. There will be more. So you're, that might be your first target, but your broad information might be all the way down here. Well, like for example, with this 3 two, 2 your three is a broad information on lower time frame. Right. So right here. Time frame continuities to the downside. We know this is the bottom of the broad information. You get in right here. Boom, you hit the bottom of the broad information. If you have time frame continuities to the downside, we should blow through it. But if it starts to come back in that range, you know, you can scale out of your position or sell it all and just learn to be consistent with it before you start trying to leave runners. And then opposite for right here. All right. So this cheat sheet is going to help you go far. Understanding broad information is what's going to really help you, as well as time frame continuity, marking your opens, understanding the uncoupling. Those are all things that you need to understand. I do have pre I do have videos of that on my channel, but I also will update those videos. If there's anything else you want from me, leave it in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe. Also, I will say that I do. Um. I do have a course that teaches you everything, finding plays, uh, how to pick contracts, how to use TradingView, how to use Thinkorswim, things of that nature. So if you are brand new to trading, um, but you understand at least the basics of options, this course can be very helpful for you. I'll bring it over to the screen real quick. This is what it looks like. This is how much uh, info is in there. It's over 15 hours of content. You can see right here, other indicators that I use. All right. Here's some videos on broad information. Also a section on trading psychology, print offs so that you can, um, you know, keep up with, you know, your trades, journaling, all that different stuff, um, as well as live market reviews, trading view tutorial, thinkorswim tutorial, transpider tutorial, and some bonuses. All right. And then resources that has like the scans that I use and things of that nature. So if you're interested in that, that'll be in the description and comment section below. If you don't like the course and after you get it, it does come with a 30 day money back guarantee. All right. So you don't all oh, you buy it and then, you know, you can't get your money back at the course. So I stand by it. You'll be able to get your money back. Um. So, yeah, other than that. Again, remember to leave a like if you're interested in that. Look in that for that below. Appreciate everybody. Catch y'all in part two.